Okay, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we're going to be looking at this serious, serious family issue that is playing out in the public eye pertaining to the butlers. Basically, giving an update with regard to recent legal developments. But I also want to speak on how these and other alleged incidents has probably affected the career of Kyle Butler and also how these allegations could affect the careers of Kyle and Leon going forward and also the potential implications for business and other football matters pertaining to Craig Butler's Phoenix Academy you know an angle that I don't really hear other YouTubers addressing but this whole thing is a very sad situation a very sad situation you know very very sad situation no doubt about it I'm very unfortunate to see a family having these sort of issues and having them publicly to have them privately is one thing but to have them publicly is just a a whole nother a whole nother kettle of fish so to speak um very serious allegations from kyle butler being levied against his own father you know allegations of serious abuse both physical and mental um pictures you know, being published, showing very severe, very nasty looking wounds. Um, what appears to be a stab wound. You know, certainly, <laughs> certainly there's a, there's a big hole in his hand, you know. And... Uh, Kyle is basically alleging that he was stabbed by his own father. Well, according to Kyle, the knife was thrown at him and the beard, the blade rather, pierced him. Again, very serious accusation, you know, according to Kyle. This is not a one-off. This is something that has well not probably well he, he never apparently this is as bad as it has ever gotten but there have been you know prior incidents according to kyle allegedly you know alleging physical and mental abuse from his own father against himself and his mother you know some very unfortunate stuff some very unfortunate stuff and as I said, it's it's very, very sad to see it play out in the media. Um you know, as a, uh, in addition to the stab wound, there's also his, his lip appears to be busted, allegedly, because you have to say allegedly with these with all of these statements. Because there's multiple sides to a story, but his his lip appears to be busted allegedly. There's also some marks on his back that he alleges are marks from a cutlass. Apart, well, allegedly, Kyle claims that his father hit him out of a cutlass or a machete. You know, and, and just it's just not a good look. It's it's not a good situation any at all for e for everyone involved. Um of course, it must be said that Craig denies all these accusations. He denies the accusations and say that they are they are not true. You know, he has even come out. He has even put out a statement to the media, basically. Um, I don't want to quote it word for word, but basically saying that his son is going through some stuff right now you know and 
basically denying that he has ever physically or mentally abused his son or his wife. Um, you know, and obviously Kyle is, is sticking to his, his guns. Kyle's mother, Kyle's mother is also is siding with her son and saying that she she supports her son and she stands by him and his statements 100 percent i mean just to add more fuel to the fire when she came out with that because you know now it's mother son and father mother father and son you know involved in this publicly not a good look man really really not a good look you know she herself has basically accused allegedly accused mr craig butler of being a narcissist being controlling and you know accusing him of abuse both physical and mental you know again craig has denied this it must be very important to know that craig has also stated that through his lawyers that if he wanted to he could actually um go the legal route as it pertains to action against his wife who he says he has accused both well he has accused his wife i know that for sure that he has said that you know there through his lawyers that there have been incidents in the past where she has done things to him that could legally amount to assault allegedly you know so it's just allegations swirling around and it's it's, it's really just a, a, a nasty look for all involved it's also important to note that the wife has vehemently denied these claims and has even you know gone on to call her husband a liar and also to say that these occasions that he must be referring to are occasions in which she was defending herself and defending her person allegedly and craig has also filed an assault complaint against his son alleging physical abuse from his son you know that his son has has been physically abusive to him in the past you know my opinion on this basically is that it appears to me that this might be a legal strategy because if he's accusing both mother and son of physical assault why just file a complaint against the son and not against the mother you know more than likely this is a, a legal strategy i think that probably he is trying to basically do a legal tit for tat and basically try and get this thing settled out of court by threatening legal action and getting kyle to back down um my thing though is you know craig denies this you know and obviously he's going to deny it because i mean who admits to something like this but my question is where did the wound come from you know craig is saying that initially he told the star it is reported allegedly that craig that kyle rather fell on a stick i mean man I, I i just can't believe that that wound is too severe a wound for for anyone to to fall on a stick and and receive I, I just can't see that happening not saying it isn't true i'm just saying i don't believe that right you know the story goes our our kyle's story goes kyle's story is basically that he turned up for training you know, he was up at Mona High School training with Donovan Duke. 
you know, who was his, his under-23 national coach when he played for the, 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 the under-23 national team. And apparently, Craig was the one that had turned up to train Kyle. And Kyle basically is saying, allegedly, that he told his father that he was not going to train because of a previous incident that involved apparently a machete, allegedly. You know? And basically, I don't remember exactly what Kyle says. Basically, they were going home or something like that. And Craig allegedly said to Kyle that he must get out of the car. And then he uh, he must walk home, allegedly. And then Kyle is alleging that Craig then stopped the vehicle and said, You think it, you think it a gogoso? Allegedly. And somewhere in between all of that, allegedly, an individual went into the trunk of a vehicle, took out a knife, and threw it. Right? As I said, all of this is alleged. You know, we, 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 we don't know the facts. You know, but my thing is that Craig is not looking good in this situation. And obviously, I'm not, you know, casting any aspersions. I'm not saying, you know, he's he's guilty or anything like that. Because obviously, it has to be played out in the courts and all of that sort of stuff. But from my perspective and how I see it, in my opinion, you know, I just, when when Craig allegedly tells the star that he fell on a knife, and a, and a stick rather that Kyle fell on a stick you know I just that that just I mean when you look at the wound it's a nasty wound I mean somebody even commented under the post on Twitter that Kyle did that you know basically asking is that a stab wound because basically from the context you can surmise the context and the pictures you can immediately sort of have an idea as to what Kyle is alleging even before he indicates that it was indeed a stab wound. You know, and because immediately as you look at it, you can see that it is a stab wound. And basically Kyle was basically saying that he was attacked, stabbed, beat up, and basically allegedly left on the side of the road to bleed out. So, but my thing is, man, there's no, like, I'm not a medical expert, but there is no way a stick could cause that. It just, it just, it, it just seems crazy to me that he's training on the football field, on a football field, right? And a stick, he falls on a stick and it causes that bigger wound. One is, and it's, there's a huge hole in his hand, like it's opened up, it's a wound, and it goes right through to the other side. I can't, I can't see a stick causing that. I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't. And what is a stick doing upright on a football pitch for someone to fall and it go through? You know, it just doesn't make sense. But again, I'm not casting any aspersions. All of this is allegedly, and it, it has to go you know, before before the courts and it, it's certainly heading that way you now because the latest development is that both parties have lawyered up. And that Kyle has also filed a police report. Um so you know very very sad and, and very unfortunate you know for all of this to be to be coming out you know very very sad and very unfortunate another thing i want to say is that he says kyle is going through some some things but one something clearly caused the wound and two why would he just get up out of the blue i mean i'm sorry the kid doesn't look like he's he has, he has any mental problems to me why would he just get up out of the blue and accuse his father and then what makes it even worse is that 
his mother, who is an eyewitness, a credible eyewitness, to what has taken place over the years, is siding with her son. Now, if the son was lying, you know, I would imagine the mother not saying anything, but the mother publicly comes out and accuses, allegedly accuses the father of the same things. It's just not, it's not a good look for everyone, but it, it, it's, it's certainly not a good look for the, the, the alleged attacker in this whole scenario. Um, this has implicate, one of the things I really want to focus on in this video is the implications for, um, pertaining to football for both Kyle and, and Leon. Um, you know, Kyle, Kyle has played professionally in, in Europe. He has played professionally for West, I don't remember the name of the football club in Belgium right now, West, Westerlau or something to that effect. Basically, this club was a, a first division Belgian team at the time in 2017. Unfortunately, they got relegated, but if memory serves me right, they signed him in January. They signed Kyle in January because Kyle was initially at the Genk Academy. Right, playing for the Genk under twenty ones, I believe. Right, and basically are the Genk junior team, which is a big deal. You have to be a decent talent to be playing for the Genk junior team. I mean, the Genk, the Genk football club, and the Genk football academy has produced so many world class talents over the years. Big star players playing for Belgium and other football clubs. So, to, to so Kyle must must have decent talent, certainly at that time, at that age, to have been in the Genk Academy and leaving the Genk Academy at 19, if memory serves me right. At 18 or 19, he left the Genk Academy and signed professional, professionally for a Belgian first division team. That's a big deal. You have to be a decent talent pull off something like that you have to be a decent talent to pull off something like that right to sign professionally as a teenager for a belgian first division team and you know i hear some people saying that well you know kyle probably got into gink because his brother leon was playing for the gink first team at the time you know i don't buy that the fact of the matter is that this is professional football at a professional level and clubs are not going to sign a player just simply because you know the the older brother is playing in the the the, the first squad you, you have to have some talent to be able to be in the in the genk academy you know so i i, I don't hear i don't agree with people saying that oh kyle isn't good because i've heard that that oh Kyle isn't good. Kyle has to be a decent talent to be able to be to have been able to be playing in the Genk Academy. And then as a teenager signing professionally for Westerlo in the Belgian first division. Right. Unfortunately, he signed in January and later on in the season the club got relegated from the the belgian pro league down to the belgian second league now i cannot speak to the the terms of of the contract i i i i if i if if i'm not mistaken you were signed on a free obviously and i am not so sure if he was released from his contract or if it was just a six months contract or whatever the case was but when the club was relegated, Kyle was, no, he was released. Then I don't know if it, the contract had ended or, you know, you know, he was bought out of it or whatever the case is. You know, I, I'm not so 100% sure as to the legal, you know, situation right there, you know, what happened there. My, I suspect 
that sometimes some of these clubs when they get relegated finances is an issue and so to offset some of the costs especially you know the main cost being the overheads with regards to staff and by staff i mean players you know so a lot of these clubs when they get relegated relegated they start to basically you know get rid of players so to speak you know for financial reasons i don't know if that's the reason why kai got was you know that relationship didn't continue i don't know if that's the reason why but i suspect probably that that probably has something to do with it because you know if i'm if i'm not mistaken i don't think he played many games for them i i i probably one or two substitute appearances if memory served me right it was a long time ago but my thing is you don't sign a kid straight from the Genk Academy to your team and then cut him like that either he didn't make the grade or because of financial reasons they you know decided to to cut ties with him it would be very surprising though if it was a case where he didn't make the grade because or didn't you know they weren't happy with him because just a couple months before that they embarked on this relationship and more than likely they would have you know seen him on trial and would have been impressed there must have been some reason why they were impressed enough to give this young man a professional contract you know and sometimes it's also um basically the case where players also want to leave you know they don't want to play in the second division or they don't want to remain at the club because the club has now been relegated so it could be it could be a, a number of different reasons why that relationship did not last but anyways he has played in malta he has played in both the austrian and third the, the maltese first division and the austrian second and third division for lask juniors and i'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of that other um third division team that he played for and he got a couple games for them not many but he got a couple games for them especially considering the fact that both contracts were six months contracts because they were signed in january lasting through to the end of that respective year you know i've seen clips of some of his performances for both club and the under 20 the under 23 national team you know and i mean obviously he's not his 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 adopted brother but with that being said you know it, it's kind of a bit surprising to me why because he looks a decent player you know certainly has a very good eye he's a he's a central midfielder you know creative or holding it it seems like you know and he one thing i realized from the highlights is that he has an eye for a, a very good pass you know some and he, he can hit some some really deep passes some really long range good quality passes with either foot as well so he looks a decent player to me and especially when he f when he was in the initial stages of him being a professional or trying to become a professional or after he signed his first professional contract it it, it kind of judging by the highlights he seems a decent player and especially a, for, for, for such a young player i mean now he's 22 but before you know obviously he retired from from foot well not retired but kind of put football aside and then came back you know so he would have been you know 18 19 20 21 and given his young age there is potential for great upside that he could develop into obviously a much better player than he is right now or than he was at the time and i have never really heard anybody question kyle's attitude um he you know judging from the image that he portrays 
you know, in his personality and so forth and so forth, he strikes me as a very disciplined young man. So, and I've never heard complaints from anyone regarding his attitude. So I really and truly doubt that that could be a problem. Even though it is alleged that Craig has allegedly accused Kyle of using substances. Um, you know, more specifically drugs, you know, obviously. You know, Kyle certainly seems to feel this way that that is what that that is coming from his father because he has spoken about this in an interview but as i said you know that that has never been been proven and you know kyle vehemently denies these allegations so i really cannot understand why he was struggling to really you know establish himself as a professional and also the highlights that i've seen suggest that he's a decent player so it's kind of a bit surprising why he has not managed to re why he has become a journeyman basically and why he has not managed to cement his place somewhere you know um and you know there could be a number of reasons for that you know he has stated publicly now that he has suffered a lot from depression because of the situation with his father that could be one of the, the the things i've always noticed in interviews with him that he doesn't seem to be the most confident person around you know he 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 he, he just he just i mean you could probably say shy you could probably say quiet or whatever the case is but to me, just looking at him, he doesn't exude confidence. And I'm wondering if this situation or alleged situation with his father over the years has caused him depression. You know, I, 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 I wonder. Well, he himself has said that, but in terms of depression, in terms of has it affected his game? you know on the pitch that has really been a reason for him struggling to to nail down a spot anywhere um another issue some might you know surmise from looking at the situation objectively is that you know many people say allegedly that craig is very hard to deal with now my thing is that if that is true Clubs will put up with that with Leon Bailey. But I really don't see them putting up with that with Kyle because Leon is of such a talent that it doesn't matter how difficult you know Leon could be or his representatives or whatever the case may be. Clubs will endure that because obviously Leon is a superstar talent. No doubt about it. He's on fire in, in, in Germany right now as we speak. He has scored a couple goals since the start of the season, like um about about five about six goals or so from the start of the season. Point is he, he you know he he has long established himself as a very good talent ever since a, a very young age. Big clubs scouting him, looking at him, talking about him, etc. etc. So if this is the case and all of these rumors are true that allegedly Craig is not the easiest person to deal with and honestly I can I can kind of see that Craig doesn't Craig doesn't look like the easiest person to 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 deal with just from my standpoint objectively speaking you know but if this is true clubs will put up with this with Leon they won't necessarily put up with, that, with it with Kyle because although Kyle is a decent player, he obviously isn't Leon Bailey talent. You know, and he's not any... He is probably just another average talent, another average player. You know, he's not a player that stands out to, for clubs to really mentally prepare themselves and say, look, we're going to put up with anything 
just because this player is you know so so talented and we see it with players all around the world superstar players superstar talents clubs are willing to put up with these players with these with their representatives and their shenanigans just because a player is just super talented so so those are two of the things that kind of stand out to me one has his has his performances on the pitch been affected that has prevented him from performing on a consistent basis and and, and as a and i just want to point it point out that i haven't seen a lot of kyle i'm just going by some of the highlights that i have seen right of you know of his career i have not seen a lot of kyle so i'm just saying the highlights and the fact that he came out of the genk academy and went straight to a professional team as just a teenager right in belgium of all of all the places that is known for producing especially in the last 15 years or so has produced a lot of big talent out of belgium so from that perspective obviously he from that perspective and the fact that i have seen you know little bits and pieces of him he must be a decent player if you sign with a professional club as a teenager 18 or 19 you know though i don't remember the exact age but you must be a professional a decent player if you sign if you if you were in the genk academy and come out of the genk, genk academy straight into a professional team in the belgian first division you must be a decent player no doubt about it so it, it's kind of i'm kind of wondering you know how has his career just not been able to get going you know and these are probably some of the reasons why you know and this is just on my vantage point just wondering just sharing my thoughts you know is it a case where his his, his performances and the pitch have been affected one and two is it a case where you know clubs are not prepared to deal with his agent you know, and the the trouble just isn't worth it, you know. And as I said, again, has to be a decent player. He signed with a Austrian second division team, got a couple of games for them as well. Has to be a decent player, but for some reason, he just cannot nail down a spot somewhere. And I'm I'm very sad that especially the Westerlau situation didn't work out, because who's to tell what? might have happened with his career if that club did not get relegated from the belgian pro league um other matters pertaining to football and this whole mega drama that has you know exploded over the last week or so the phoenix football academy that has you know a couple of players playing in europe you know and has helped produce the likes of alian bailey you know what what how is this going to have implications for 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 Craig and his business you know these are serious allegations from his own son you know of of domestic abuse you know against wife and child allegedly so so this might even potentially hurt Craig the allegations at the very least whether proven or unproven might potentially hurt craig because he is running an academy here ladies and gentlemen an academy that is basically you know parents are sending their young children to train for to for craig to use his connections to help get them into europe are parents now gonna take a step back and say hey do i really want my child to be training with someone who is being alleged of this uh, uh, being alleged to be carrying out this sort of uh, activities against his own family you know not even from the perspective of you know um basically the drama or wanting to distance themselves from the drama but also just from a, a perspective um of the the safety just from the standpoint of the safety of their own children right 
Now it's very important to note nobody else has ever come out and accused Craig of any abuses, abuse in any way, shape or form. But at the same time, this is his son who a lot of people deem to be credible. This is his wife. I mean, if your son and your wife is saying this about you and, you know, is, 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 I mean, y y your family is supposed to be the ones that have your back no matter what. They are the ones that if the whole world says you're the worst person, your family should at least be the ones to say we love you, we cherish you, you're a good person, we can swear for you. But when your family isn't backing you, you know, that's some, that's some serious stuff. And, and he is being alleged of a stabbing, of losing his temper and getting violent. Now, a parent might say, you know, how can I, how can I trust this man around my own child? Because if allegedly he can lose his temper and do that to his own child, what to say he, you know, has the very least has the capabilities to, to do this to somebody else's child. Now, if I was a parent and heard this, I would pull my child immediately. I don't care about the opportunities i don't whether you know get links in europe or training or whatever the case may be because safety of the child comes first right so it's 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 just you know we'll just have to sit and and wait and to see how this plays out how this affects the phoenix academy the phoenix academy also has sponsorship deals and does sponsorship deals and partnerships with corporate entities will these corporate entities now cut their you know relationships with the phoenix academy because of this we'll just have to wait and see and see how this turns out also it's very important to note that craig is saying that there's no way he would have been physically capable of committing this attack because he's saying that he recently did a surgery right and he was not physically in a position to be able to do something like this my thing is are you physically in a position to be able to train your son are you physically in a position to be able to train your son after just completing a surgery so, you know, I, I would love to see some proof and some evidence of that. Not saying the guy is lying. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying to, to show up to training to train your son after just doing a surgery, that just doesn't seem practical to me. Like, that, that, that would be crazy. Like, he would have to have next level drive to endure that pain and possibly even hurt himself in the process to do something like that. Even if he's just shouting instructions the mere fact that he's standing walking you know he'd probably just have to be just sitting and shouting instructions for heaven's sakes for that to be practical because the fact of the matter is if that were so in a situation like that he should be resting but hey not accusing anybody of not being truthful or anything but we'll see how that plays out in the courts um, very also important to discuss the potential implications for the relationship with the flagship player, Leon Bailey, because, you know, obviously Leon Bailey is the big thing coming out of, of Phoenix Academy. You know, obviously he's the biggest name that has and probably will ever come out of the academy because he's such a big deal. Leon Bailey potentially has the talent to become one of the best players at the very least, a contender for a Ballon d'Or in the future, I believe. You know, judging from what I've seen over the course of his career. You know, I, I think he's the real deal. I think he can go on to be a top five player. I really do. And, you know, and I also think that he'll probably get it done because he seems to have the drive and the determination to be, to, 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 become the best he can be you know so it's very important to discuss the potential you know implications of the relationship with leon now nobody knows what leon thinks about this 
you know, allegations being made that a post he made was throwing shade, I don't know. Right? You know, obviously I can't speak to the subjective intentions of the baller. Right? But, you know, Leon, Leon, we don't know what really and truly Leon thinks about this. And there could be a possibility that he takes sides with his adopted brother. Now, I'm not saying that he's going to do that. But Craig, but Kyle rather, and his mother are distancing themselves from Craig. You know, if Leon decides to distance himself and potentially even cut business ties and say, you know, look, I don't want Craig to be my agent anymore. And all of this is just hypothetically speaking. Obviously, it has not happened as yet, but it is a possibility that it could happen. You know, because it is a possibility that he might feel very strongly about the incident because it is a serious incident. It's it's a serious incident and, you know, it's it's very sad. You know, as I said, Craig has one side to the story. Kyle has one side of the story. You know, the fact of the matter is he has a very nasty wound on his hand. However, it came about, whether according to Craig's version or Kyle's version, it's something, it was a serious accident or incident at the very least, right? Now, who knows what Leon believes? Who knows if Leon is in contact with all the parties involved? Who knows what Leon believes? And who knows what Leon, you know, Leon's intentions or the actions, who knows what Leon sees as, as his path forward, you know? Cutting ties with, 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 with Craig is a possibility because my thing is that I think it's all said and done between I really and truly don't see any way to come back between Kyle and Craig. I don't because a son doesn't just get up and accuse of, of accuse his own father of stabbing him. Clearly, he genuinely believes that whether it's true or not. Now, if he genuinely believes that, how, how do you forgive somebody and move past that for doing that to you? You know, I, I just can't see that. I, I really just can't see how that. And so if that's the case, and already Kyle is alleging also that he has an older brother, which we knew nothing about, that has already distanced, him, distanced himself from Craig. Again, you know, we don't know. That is just Kyle's version of the story. But my thing, it's a very realistic possibility that Leon could be forced to take sides. One, by both parties involved. And two, based on his own feelings about what has allegedly taken place. And one must also remember as well, too, that the fact of the matter is Leon Bailey has a lot to be grateful to Craig, to his adopted father, Craig, and to the Phoenix Academy. He has a lot to be grateful for. Fact of the matter is, he's, he's an adopted son, you know, from what he has said in the past, if memory serves me right, allegedly he does not really have a relationship with his father. And so Craig has taken him under his wings ever since he was a boy a little boy and has done a lot for him right we're talking about his adopted family here you know him being the adopted child his adopted father his adopted brother he has to have very serious feelings either way whichever side of the story he believes whether he believes craig or whether he believes his younger brother kyle he has to have very very serious feelings about what has taken or what has allegedly taken place but the fact of the matter is that if leon were to decide to leave phoenix academy it would be a devastating blow to the phoenix academy from a, a number of different perspectives you know just the fact that to have the flagship player basically you know, just from a, from a public standpoint, an image standpoint, it just it just wouldn't look good for Phoenix. 
if Leon were to decide to leave, it wouldn't be a good look. And the fact of the matter is, Leon doesn't owe Craig anything, even though he might feel that way. Fact of the matter is, it's been a, a mutually beneficial relationship, right? Who's to tell if Leon doesn't see it from that perspective? The fact of the matter is, Leon Bailey has made Craig Butler and the Phoenix Academy millions, right? Not to mention, you know, the brand recognition that Leon has, has, has given the Phoenix Academy and how he has really put it on the map, right? And he is a major major marketing tool for the phoenix academy in terms of you know doing business in europe right to have your flagship player being leon bailey it does help in getting people or at least getting a seat at the table or getting people to at least listen to what you have to say another aspect to craig's phoenix academy business model also is that will european clubs want to deal with him on a, on a business level leon bailey's thing will help drastically with confidence in the phoenix academy and uh, as i said getting people you know getting a, a seat at the table getting people to hear what you have to say because if leon were to leave it would even it would add even more credibility to the allegations against him you know and it 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 would be very difficult to do business on a whole you know and that's a and and truth be told i it it it, it is a possibility that european clubs might not want to deal with him depending on how this turns out how this plays out but I, i'm not even sorry this is just another angle you know i am or another possibility because i'm really and truly not i don't think that that would be an issue really because european clubs as long as you have the talent man they they, they don't really care about who the agent is or what the agent is alleged or accused of doing or you know has done in the past you know Craig has even previously been accused of kidnapping, you know, allegedly. He has been accused allegedly of kidnapping, you know. I don't know if there's any truth to that, yes or no. So, but, and big clubs, are, are European clubs still deal with him, you know. So as long as you have the talent, you know, they, they, they will still deal with you regardless of, of, of you know, what, they, what they, they think about you or if they deem allegations against you to be credible. But, you know, it's still a possibility that, you know, some clubs might want to stay far and stay clear of Craig Butler's Phoenix Academy, depending on how this whole situation plays out. And if Leon were to leave, it would just even add more credibility to the accusations and really, really put a dent in Craig Butler's operations. You know, very interesting to see how that relationship between Leon and Phoenix plays out in the coming weeks or the coming months. You know, Leon is coming up at a very crucial point in time in his career. You know, in his penultimate year at Bayer Leverkusen, Red Hot Farm doing well. You know, it's it's coming very close to that point in time where contract negotiations you know is going to become a thing if it hasn't already you know been some discussions between his representatives and Bayer Leverkusen you know so after he has like a year and a half left so who's to tell what's going to happen it's a very important time in Leon's career whether whether he stays at Bayer Leverkusen renews his contract whether in the summer Bayer Leverkusen decide to sell him to get something for him so he doesn't leave on a free to recoup some costs who's to tell what Leon Bailey will decide to do in terms of who manages his affairs going forward at this crucial stage of his career so you know again you know very very sad to see what has happened 
uh, what has allegedly happened and i hope that that it can be there can be some peace and both parties can you know whoever needs to because both parties are alleging serious allegations against each other whoever needs to you know amend their ways whoever whatever it takes it would be best if this relationship can be fixed i really don't see it being fixed to be honest with you but hey we'll just have to wait and see how this thing plays out in the coming days weeks and months and we'll definitely be keeping our eye on it here on formula sports